In section four of chapter one, we're going to be moving to some more um, specific types of equations and absolute value equations. So that's our sole objective today is to be able to solve uh, absolute value equations. Okay, recall the definition of the absolute value of a number. Okay. The absolute value of number is defined as the distance a number is from zero on the number line. So let's review notation here. If I wrote this out, I'm saying what is the absolute value of two or more specifically, um, what is the distance between two and zero on the number line? That would be two units. Similarly, if I asked you what's the absolute value of negative two, you should also be saying two units as well, right? Because the key word here is distance, right? Distance is positive, so our final answer when working with absolute value should always represent a positive value, okay? All right, hit done up in the top right of your uh, screen there. And then if we click on this illustration, open this link, we're going to have a nice visual of what it means to actually solve an absolute value equation here. Notice the equation in the top left. We have the absolute value of x minus 0 equal to 8. That's the same as just saying the absolute value of x equals 8. Um, I'm looking for any number on the number line that is 8 units exactly from 0. So we'll slide down here, going in either direction from 0, the center, we can see that both x equals 8 and x equals negative 8 are solutions to this equation. All right, so this is telling us that an absolute value equation typically is going to have uh, two answers. Okay, it's going to have um, what I like to refer to as the positive case and a negative case, right? You can go uh, 8 units in the positive direction or you can go 8 units into the negative direction um, to achieve your solution. All right, now let's reset here, and I'm going to manipulate the equation a little bit. So let's first adjust the center here. Instead of being centered at 0, I now want to treat it as though I'm centered at negative 1. So I'm, I'm adjusting the definition here a little bit. Now I'm not thinking of a distance from 0. I'm now thinking of a distance from negative 1. And notice how that changes the equation. I now have the absolute value of x minus negative 1, or that's really the same as saying the absolute value of x plus 1. And what's it equal to? It's equal to how far you want to be away. So let's. I'm going to move that into uh, a value of 5. Um, so I'm, not, I'm sorry, a value of 6, OK? All right, let's slide here, and we can see that from that center, we are six units away in either direction. So that's going to take us to the numbers of five and of negative seven. So once again, we had to go in both the positive direction, six units, and the negative direction, six units. All right? Okay, let's go back to our... Um, numbers file. If you have the file in front of you, just click numbers in the top left there. It should take you right back to the file. And here's our first example. We want to solve this equation and check our solution. Okay, as we saw from the illustration, we should end up most likely with two answers, right? So I have the absolute value of y plus 3 is equal to 8. I know that the expression that's inside the absolute value, so this y plus 3, there's a positive version of it that should equal 8, and there's a negative version of it that should 
uh, give me an absolute value of 8 as well. So let's start with the positive case. Uh, let's just take that y plus 3. Think of that as a positive quantity and equal it to 8. Solving, you get y to equal 5. Now let's check that solution, make sure it works. If I plug 5 back in for y in the original equation, 5 plus 3 is 8, and the absolute value of 8 is in fact 8. So that checks out. Okay. Next, we want to move to the negative case. So this time, I want to treat y plus 3 as though it's a negative quantity. So notice I, I took the negative of the entire expression y plus 3. Parentheses are really important there. Now, some of you might be tempted here to distribute the negative through. You can. I don't think it's necessary. Instead of distribution, we could simply divide both sides of this equation by a negative 1 or multiply by negative 1. It's up to you. And that's going to wipe those out. And it'll take me here to y plus 3 equals negative 8. Subtract 3 over, and I get negative 11. Check that. If you plug negative 11 back in for y in the original equation, negative 11 plus 3 would give you negative 8, and the absolute value of negative 8 is, in fact, 8 as well. So recap here. In the positive case, all I did was I took the expression inside the absolute value, I treated that as a positive quantity and set it equal to 8 and solved. And then for the negative case, I took the expression that was inside the absolute value and I treated it like a negative quantity, set that equal to the distance of 8 and solve for y. All right. On the next sheet here, you've got a problem of your own to try. Pause the video for a minute, work through it on your own. When you're done, start the video back up and use it to check your solution. <coughs> All right, moving on to a slightly more sophisticated equation here. Uh, directions are the same. Solve and check your answer. Um, I want you to notice in this equation that the, the left side that contains the absolute value, there are numbers and operations outside of the absolute value to worry about. So here's the rule of thumb in this situation. You always want to, you always must isolate the absolute value first. I want you to do that before you try to set up your positive case and your negative case. So what do I mean by isolate? isolate? Isolate means get the absolute value alone by itself. Okay, So for this particular equation, 
that's going to require two steps. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add four to both sides. Two times the absolute value of x minus seven is equal to 12. And then I'm going to divide out two from both sides. Okay. Why can I divide out two? Because the original two that was in front of the absolute value, it's multiplying it. Okay. Now that's going to take me to the absolute value of x minus seven is equal to six. Now let's pause here for a second. Let's back up to that previous step. Uh, sometimes instead of dividing by 2, I will get students that try to distribute the 2 into the absolute value. That is a huge no-no. So let's write this in here. Never distribute into absolute value. Don't distribute the 2, instead divide it out. <clears throat> okay. All right. Once we are at the absolute value of x minus 7 equals 6, we have our absolute value isolated, and we are now able to set up our two cases. Positive. x minus 7, that's positive expression equal to 6 so x equals 13 okay now check it in your original equation 13 minus 7 is 6 the absolute value of 6 is 6 6 times 2 would then be 12 and 12 minus 4 is 8 and then we move to the negative case Absolute value of x minus 7. Let's take the x minus 7 and treat it like a negative quantity now. So we're going in the negative direction. And x ends up equaling 1. Check that. 1 minus 7 is negative 6. The absolute value of which is 6. 6 times 2 12 and 12 minus 4 is 8. All right, pause the video and try this one on your own and start back up. Use it to check. All right, now let's uh, take a look at what happens in this particular uh, equation here. Solve the following, check your solution. All right, notice the absolute value is not isolated, so I'm going to begin by subtracting 5 from both sides. I have... The absolute value of 6y minus 2 is equal to negative 4. Now the absolute value is isolated, and I should be able to set up my positive case, my negative case, right? So here's your positive. 6y minus 2 is equal to negative 4. 6y would equal negative 2. 
y would equal negative one third. All right now let's check that one. If I were to plug negative one third back in for y in the original equation, six times negative one third, that's going to give me negative two. Negative two minus two is negative four. The absolute value of four is four. And four plus five does not equal one. Okay, let's, let's show all that work over to the side here. So that's negative 2 minus 2 plus 5 equals 1. Absolute value of negative 4 plus 5 equals 1. 4 plus 5 equals 1. No, it doesn't. 9 doesn't equal 1. So what we have here is an extraneous solution. Okay? That doesn't work. Now let's try the negative case. Take the negative 6y minus 2 equal to negative 4. Or 6y minus 2 is equal to 4. 6y is equal to 6. y equals 1. Oh, it's an integer. That's, that's nice. Let's check it. with absolute value of 4 plus 5 equals 1 4 plus 5 equals 1 and therefore 9 equals 1 right no it doesn't so 1 does not work either neither solution satisfied the original equation therefore my final answer is the empty set or I'll say no solution now, I could have saved myself a ton of work had I made this observation. After, in the very beginning, after I subtracted by 5 to isolate the absolute value, notice the absolute value ends up equaling a negative 4. Think about what that, that's saying. We're looking for the value of y that when you plug it in, Multiply it by 6, subtract it by 2, take the absolute value of it. Its distance from 0 is negative 4 units. That is not true. All right? Absolute value can never be negative. So we could have saved ourselves a lot of time if we had made that observation in the beginning. Okay, um, I I think that it's it's always a good idea to check your answers in case you make uh, make that oversight. Right, we were still able to catch ourselves by going through the full process here uh, after we checked our answers and saw that neither of them worked. Okay, so always watch out for that particular situation. All right, one final example here. Uh, notice, in this equation, I have variables on both sides. Um, I need to think of the 2y minus 3 as a distance, right? Absolute value of 8 plus y, I want it to equal out to a distance of 2y minus 3. Um, I'm, I'm not really going to approach this much differently than any of my uh, previous problems. So, notice the absolute value is isolated. I can go right to my positive case and my negative case. So uh, let's go green. Here's your positive case. 8 plus y, treat that as positive, equals 2y minus 3. Solving that, negative y is equal to negative 11. y equals 11. Okay, let's check it.
absolute value of 8 plus 11 equals 2 times 11 minus 3. That's 19. Absolute value of 19 equals 22 minus 3. Or 19 equals 19. Sure does check out. Awesome. All right, second case, negative case. Let's take the negative of 8 plus y and equal it to 2y minus 3. <clears throat> All right, now here, it might not be a bad idea to distribute uh, since you've got the variable to the other side. It's up to you. You can either distribute or you could have divided both sides by the negative 1, multiplied by negative 1, however you want to look at it. Okay, that's going to end up giving me negative 3y is equal to 5. y equals negative 5 thirds. All right, let's check that one. All right, so absolute value of 8 minus 5 thirds equals 2 times negative 5 thirds minus 3. So I need a common denominator here. 24 thirds minus 5 thirds equals negative 10 thirds minus 3. That's 19 thirds, the absolute value of which is supposed to equal negative 10 thirds minus 9 thirds. So the absolute value of 19 thirds is 19 thirds. Does that equal negative 19 thirds? No, it does not. So this second solution can be thrown out, leaving us only with one answer of 11. Right, so here's a rare case where an absolute value equation does not give us two solutions. The second one is an extraneous solution. We can only keep the first.